Today we'll be looking at the Neo Cube Squared by Medium Gear. You would think it uh, should be uh, cubed instead of squared, but it's squared, I guess. So we'll take a look at the case. And it's uh, by a company called Magnium Gear. And that's supposed to be powered by Fantex. So that could be a company division of Fantex or something. I'm not really sure. Opening up the box, everything was packaged well with styrofoam and plastic. Case came in good condition. There weren't any scratches or dents or anything in it. A little difficult to get out of the, the box because I had pushed the tabs in on the side, making it a little difficult to uh, slide out. But eventually it comes out. I got the white version of the case. It also comes in a black version. And as you'll see, the case does resemble a 011 Dynamic Evo by Lee and Lee. I believe this is upside down right now. Let's turn it upside. Getting the plastic off. One of the main selling points of this case is the mirror, Infinity Mirror RGB that's on the front of the case. Once we have it put together, and turned on, you'll see what that looks like. But it's a pretty decent looking case altogether. As long as you, you like the dual chamber design that's similar to the Lee and Lee cases. The full tempered glass side panel. On the top of the case, there's two panels that it comes with. One that's got mesh on it, and the other that's solid, the smaller one on the back side. Standard back, dual chamber design, power supply goes on the left. And on the back, the back panel has two mesh areas, which allows quite a bit of airflow. In the case, there's no room for or mounting spots for fans in the front where the infinity mirror is. So all airflow will be coming from the bottom and the back of the case and the top. You'd have to remove the two top panels to get the side panels off.
just slide off and come up. We have two captive thumb screws on each of them. Actually, maybe one on the side one. Tempered glass side panel just lifts up. Comes up pretty easily with the top off. Pretty decent looking case for an all-white case, not a whole lot of black to compete with the white in there. And the other top panel will let you get into the back. which will come up just like the side panel. Inside the case comes with the uh, instructions as well as the accessories. Mostly just screws and standoffs. Some cable ties. and some build instructions for the case. So let's put a build together. First of all, we'll go over the parts list of the build that I'll be putting together today. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core i9-12900KF processor. To cool the processor, we'll be using a Fantex Glacier 1 360MPH all-in-one cooler. That's actually going to be the white version of that, even though there's a black one on the, the box pictured there. And it also has an infinity mirror RGB on the pump cap, which will be part of the theme of the build today. Then we also have a contact frame, which will replace the ILM from the motherboard. Gamers Nexus did a review on it, and they showed that they could get about 5 to 10 degrees cooler temperatures on the CPU when used that with that instead of the stock ILM on a motherboard for 12th gen Intel. For the motherboard, we have an Asus ROG Strix Z690A gaming Wi-Fi motherboard in white. And for the GPU, we have an Asus GeForce RTX 3090, 24 gigabytes, ROG Strix white OC graphics card. Then for the memory, We'll be using Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL, a 32 gigabyte kit, 4 by 8 gigabytes. And that's a DDR4 with 3600 megatransfer memory. 
and for storage we'll be using a Seagate Fire CUDA 520 2TB M.2 SSD Gen 4x4. To power it, the power supply we'll be using is an ASUS ROG Strix G 1000 watt 80 plus gold certified modular ATX power supply. And then to top off the infinity fan look, we'll be using the Lee and Lee Unifan SL Infinity three packs, three of those. And then some Asia horse cable extensions in white. And also we have a GPU vertical mounting kit from Fantex with a riser cable Gen 4 to vertically mount our GPU into the case. Let's get putting it together.
will go over my review of the Neo Cube Squared case. Some of the things that I liked about the case was that it was easy to build in. With the dual chamber design and having the power supply behind the motherboard, left plenty of area in the back of the case to be able to cable manage even when there was lots of wiring going on. Another thing that made it easy to build in was that there's lots of pass-through areas by the motherboard tray to be able to conveniently route cables in an inconspicuous way. Also, the case can be taken apart easily to work on installing components, which only required thumb screws and sliding off panels. Another thing that made it easy to build in was that the mounting locations for fans were easy to get to, and to be able to screw them in and route the cables were easy. Another thing I liked about the case are the looks and design of the case. The white version makes for an attractive option for putting together an all-white showcase build. Also, the mesh areas for air intake do not take away from the aesthetics of the case, and they blend in well with the case design. Also, considering the looks and design of the case that I liked was the dual chamber design, which did a better job of hiding the power supply and leaving only the other components on display behind the tempered glass panel than in many other cases with power supply shrouds. The infinity mirror panel in the front also is a unique design feature that looks pretty nice and can be synced with other RGB elements in your case. A third thing that I liked about the case was the quality of the materials in the case. The case was sturdy, it felt, but it was relatively lightweight. So that seemed to indicate that there were pretty high quality materials used in the construction of the case. Also, there weren't any blemishes or any other issues with the finish of the case that I noticed when I was putting together my build. And there were also some nice rubber grommets for cable pass-through on the motherboard tray. Some of the things that I disliked about the case was the, that the case prioritizes design over function. There's no mounting location for a fan by the motherboard rear I.O., which seemed a little odd. Also, there were no fan options for the front of the case where the infinity mirror is. So you would have to load up on fans in the other locations to be able to have decent airflow in the case. Another thing I disliked about the case was that it seemed to have somewhat poor value at its current price, which I bought for $180. Also, to note, there's a version of this case that they sell without the Infinity Mirror, and right now that's going for $140. So $40 more will get you the version with the Infinity Mirror. There are no fans included with the case, so you'll have to purchase all your fans in addition with the case. Also, the case is a bit on the smaller side of mid-tower cases. I know a lot of people prefer smaller cases, but a lot of times they will also come with a smaller price tag. I'd like to have seen this case sell for $150 or less, and the version with Infinity Mirror to be $120 or less. Prices might change as this is a newly released case and prices can drop after a period of time from its release. So those are my likes and dislikes of the case. Do I recommend this case? Yes and no. Yes, if you especially like the design of the case and are willing to overlook the somewhat poor value of this case, and other caveats that I mentioned. And no, if you're mainly concerned with the value of the build that you're putting together. Thanks for watching my video. Appreciate it if you would click the like button if you enjoyed it, and please leave any comments or questions below. See you next time.